And this next attraction, three rounds scheduled at a catch weight, 188 pounds. Entering the cage first, fighting out of the blue corner from France, Eric the Bus Sibiran. And here before you, ladies and gentlemen, is Eric the Bus Sebarak. He is representing the Snake team. He has a record of eight and five and is 34 years of age. Known mostly for his Muay Thai style, uh, but Sebarak is a well-rounded mixed martial artist, and that is evident in his record. Four TKO victories, three submission wins, and one decision. He trains under UFC fighter Cyril Diabate, who is fighting this weekend, actually. A teammate to Cage Warriors veteran Gregor Buchelachem. Interestingly, he would have passed his last opponent, Victor Cheng, in the changing rooms, the man who defeated him to take the Zone FC middleweight crown. But tonight, he squares up against a very different opponent, Josh, which will present some unique challenges. Yeah, it's been, it's been an 11-month layoff for, for Eric Serberak since he fought Victor Cheng. Like a lot of the French fighters coming over to, to, to fight internationally, he, he's got some good one-night tournament experience. Uh, I, he is very well-rounded. I do question occasionally, does he perhaps accept that clinch a little too easily? Yes. Uh, but he is very patient when it does go to the ground, sweeps very, very well. Uh, and what I find most intriguing is his style of grappling greatly varies depending on what position he's in. Well, he was 3.6 pounds overweight yesterday, and uh, we will look to see if he does, in fact, have any ring rust. And his opponent from England, Mike Lang! <laughs> And that is a figure of a man that we know well here at Cage Warriors and in the United Kingdom. Mike Big Daddy Ling, representing Jim O1. He comes to the cage with an 8-3 and three record. He's 23 years of age. Now, we were talking with Brian Adams yesterday, Josh, and the strategy is quite simply to keep Eric at distance. Mike Ling is now full-time. He is training two to three times a day and has been for eight weeks. It's not a must-win, given Mike's age, but I really think that he needs to get a good win back under his belt. Yeah, Mike was very disappointed with his last couple of outings. Said it's only made him hungrier, but you know, I'm very interested psychologically to see how Mike Ling deals with that because he is coming off a, a couple of losses. And you know, as you said, he's made that move to, to training full-time. You know, he's really got to get it in his head tonight that, it, you know, this is what he's here to do. It's very, very interesting to see how he deals with it. I know he's more than capable of doing that, but, it, but it's certainly an interesting question here tonight. Oh, for sure. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, three rounds at a catch weight, 188 pounds. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. A mixed martial artist sitting six feet even. Weighing in 187 and one half pounds. His professional record, eight victories with five defeats. From Paris, France, here is Eric the Buzz Simbaran. <laughs> and next is opponent across the cage, fighting out of the red corner. Also a mixed martial artist, he stands six feet, six inches tall. His weight, 185 and three quarter pounds. As a professional, his record, eight victories and three defeats from Portsmouth, England. Here is Mike Lane! <laughs> Referee in charge, Neil Hall. So Neil Hall is the third man in the cage. Three five-minute rounds. And if Eric is the bus, then Mike Ling is the double-decker. Mike is in the blue shorts. Eric is in the red and black. That huge reach advantage for the six foot six big daddy. Yeah, having a chat with his coach, Brian Adams, the game plan is very much let's keep him on the outside. His mistake when he fought Jack Hermanson last time out here in Jordan was getting drawn into a, a toe to toe brawl. Well, even if Mike does get taken down, Josh, looking at his record, he's, he's got four TKO victories, but also four submission wins as well. And oh, no doubt. He's got an incredibly active guard. Those legs become very, very useful for attacking. You know, triangles and other submissions from the bottom. 
but his bread and butter here is to stand, keep on the outside and strike. Good wrestling defense there from Ling. Jack Hermanson, you know, really did yeah, really show him that he was he was outclassed there, but uh, doing strong, very well so far. Strong whizzer from Mike Ling. Serberak content to keep that underhook. Nice and high, a lot of knees to the inside here. Very easy for, to get up and underneath a character like Mike Ling. They're going to throw him with the wizard in the knee pick. Very nicely done by the Frenchman. Now, Savarak does have some nasty ground and pound. Yeah, he, he certainly does. He's, he's very, very active and he's constantly striking. And you see that in his posture when he grapples. It's a, it's a posture that's there to throw strikes. And, you know, it may be that, that loose if, if you were to look at it in straight jiu-jitsu terms. You know, but it's not designed to pin. It's designed to punch and it's designed to hurt. Well, Snake Team are a very good camp indeed, as are Jim 01. I'm sure these guys have all done their research on their respective opponents. And at the moment, we see that Sabarak is holding Mike Ling down on the mat. And here we see Mike trying to use his flexibility and those long limbs. Yep. Climbing up to try and get high over one shoulder here. Good high guard. Cage is not going to help him here, though. No, and he's just keeping Eric from doing anything positive at the moment. And that has, in fact, forced Neil Hall to give a warning for inactivity. Oh, armbar attempt here, possibly. If he can just get a bit of push off the cage. Well defended by Eric Serberek. Yes, and Eric coming through with some big hands. A couple of those rights landed. Better position perhaps for Eric. He's able to distribute his weight a little bit better against the taller opponent. But Mike doing well so to now escape Mike his hits. Ling looking to post and stand back up. It's the catch 22 of if you're posting with your hand, you're open to a few shots, but at the same time, you're, you're probably going to get back to your feet. Good control from the Frenchman, just keeping that underhook tight, pulling the elbow away. Brian Adams asking for Mike to get his guard back, which he, which is nearly there. But all the while, he's got Eric Sabarak raining down punches. Good stalling tactics from Mike, though, because he, as you say, just being in that kind of position against the fence, it doesn't give him a great deal of options uh, for, for being offensive with jiu-jitsu. No, he is doing a good job, though. He is searching for things and trying to work. Serberak, you know, f hasn't managed to land too much ground and pound. So he's turned the position now, but as he does so, Neil Hall is asking to stand back up, and I don't think that Serberak liked that. Well, I... I have to wonder if he did have Mike Ling's left hand tied underneath his body. So Mike looking light on his feet. Oh, oh and a good, good straight right. right. Connecting. This is where Mike Ling's got the edge. Good volume, throwing on the outside. Yes, keeping his chin nicely tucked. And each time that Eric looks to oh. throw that, that nice. kick. Mike will come over the top Double with that straight right. There. Oh, but big heavy hands from Sabarak. But Mike Ling has counted, and we know that Mike can take an awful lot of punishment. Seen that against Carl Noon, saw it against Jack Hermanson. Last 10 in this first round. Mike really looking to get inside the range and he's firing off some shots. Yep, really starting to find his timing a bit more now, but you've got to figure the judges probably going to go with the top control from Eric Serberak in that first round. Yes, that, that is a difficult one to, to call. I think Mike would have taken some confidence from those uh, final exchanges. And also, you have to look at the referee. We, we, we can see that Neil Hall is, he likes to see activity. And if, uh, if Mike is looking to stall the fight, then that's going to go in his favor if he, if he gets taken down and gets put back on his, on his back. So the beautiful ring girls, Natalie and Brooklyn,
holding the cards for us here at the new boxing arena. Let's see if we, we see a bit more head movement, a few more angles from Mike Ling now. Little Wouldn't surprise me if that was the call that came from Brian Adams in his corner. Fighters being asked to get back to their corners. And a nice touch of gloves to start off this second round. A few feints coming from Eric Sabarak. It must be so difficult fighting someone of, of uh, Mike Ling's height and reach. Yeah, I mean, it presents an entirely different uh, type of fight to you from, from you know, what, what you're used to. You've got to punch up. You've got to be concerned with getting inside to actually do a lot of your best damage. And Mike shooting in. Nice double pickup. So we're going to find out what the guard of the Frenchman Eric Cerberac is like here in this second round. Butterfly hook now, double overhooks as well. Not a lot of resistance to that takedown, Josh. No, it, it certainly wasn't. I, I said in the, the, the opening, I, I do wonder if occasionally he accepts those clinch positions a little too easily. Well, let's see what Ling can do from this position. What I have seen when I, I watched Cerberac grapple before is he's exceptionally patient. Um, it almost looks as though he is stalling and he is, you know, really just biding his time. And, and then he'll sweep or go for a submit. It's, it's, a, it's a, a dangerous game to play if, if you, you don't want to be stood up. Well, it's Mike now who, who will not want to be stood up here. And he was getting some posture to throw down his, his elbows. And the elevation that Link can get with those. Hitting the chest more than the face. But even so, staying active. Yeah, I mean, in this position, you know, you're normally happier because biomechanically it, it's you know you can extend your hips you can keep the range and sort of stop the guy on top necessarily landing that cleanly but when you've got limbs the size of Mike Ling's you really can just you know punch straight through the back of your opponent's head yeah Mike is really using that that right hand and elbow of his like a piston that's coming down he's really turning over his elbow and they're starting to get through Josh and we oh, have a tap called it there we go, Eric Severak has tapped to strikes. Very nicely done for Mike Ling. A welcomed victory for him here at Cage Warriors. And we see the growl from him as his arm is raised. Yeah, by good. his coach, Ten Brian Adams. Uh, tentative first round for Mike Ling, but clearly that pep talk from Brian Adams worked between the break. He came out, caught the takedown, and. You know, that ground and pound was something else. Yeah, well, I think keeping it standing for the amount of time that he did, uh, he, he kept Eric guessing. Um, and, and the longer that Eric was guessing, it was giving Mike more opportunities to get some of, his, some of his fluidity and some of his shots off. So very nicely done by Mike Ling. Ladies and gentlemen, the end comes two minutes. 11 seconds, round number two, stoppage due to strikes for your winner by TKO, Mike Ling! So let's take another look at this. This, this was the takedown, Josh, which, yeah, which didn't have much resistance. Really quickly. Let's see some of these elbows, though, because they really were the, the cherry on the cake for Mike Ling. Yeah, they were coming over the top, and I mean, that's a horrible vision for Eric Sabarak. There you go. You can, you can see even with the knee shield, it, just no help for him. No, 